Welcome to Nationwide, reaching you live from our network studios in Abuja on a day the world is waiting for the inauguration of Joe Biden as the 46th President of the United States of America. I am Lydia Udijiochi. We thank you for joining us. Newly appointed members of the Code of Conduct Bureau and Police Service Commission have been sworn in by President Muhammadu Buhari to fill existing vacancies in the critical organs of government. The swearing-in ceremony which preceded the meeting of the Federal Executive Council was in fulfillment of constitutional provisions. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has the details. Those sworn in as members of the Code of Conduct Bureau were Ehezua Johnson Agbonaima from Edo State, Benedict Omiano Anambra, and Babatunde Olainka Balogun Ogun State. Oyemuche Namani from Enugu State took oath as member of the Police Service Commission. The Code of Conduct Bureau is established to maintain a high standard of public morality in the conduct of government business and to ensure that accountability is not compromised in actions and behavior of public officers. For President Muhammad Buhari, whose administration's hallmark is the fight against corruption, this is one agency of remarkable significance. And indications are that the newly appointed members are coming on board to make a world of difference. I have all my life attempted to fight indiscipline, corruption, and uh, general audacity in the society. I've used my position as a police officer to do so over the years. So having me been invited over to a code of conduct bureau means that this is an opportunity to actualize those things that have been conceptualizing. I would not be in a position to bring this thing to the doorsteps of Nigerians. This is how we should conduct ourselves. This is what the law says. And by the grace of God, we, we tend to not just preach it, we want to enforce it. What is important to me and to my colleagues, I believe that this country deserves to get the best. This corruption has eaten up deeply and it's so sad. President Buhari cannot just do it alone. It will require everyone. Let us put Nigeria first. The president will not regret appointing me as a member of the CCB. But I will do my best. I will make sure that I will write my name in the annals of history. The newly appointed member of the Police Service Commission also promised to make the desired impact in the discharge of his responsibilities. I will contribute uh, my own uh, uh, quota to trying to see where I can um, uh, raise the standard. You know, the answers, I know the problems of Nigerian police. It's, not, it's a familiar story. Uh, we try and do uh, what we can do to have positive changes in the police force. The Police Service Commission has a mission to improve service delivery in the Nigeria Police Force by promoting transparency and accountability. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. A bill seeking to give legal backing to the harmonization of retirement age for teachers in Nigeria has been approved by the Federal Executive Council. The Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, who announced this while briefing journalists after the Council's meeting, described the bill as a giant step forward towards enhancing teaching and learning in the country. Details to come in our subsequent bulletins. The outgoing United States President Donald Trump has vacated the White House as the incoming President Joe Biden is about to be sworn in. President Trump was honored with 21 gun salutes before leaving the seat of power. Before his departure, Trump wished the incoming administration well, stating that his leadership was the best in all standards. Four years. We've accomplished a lot. We 
love the American people, and again, it has been something very special. And I just want to say goodbye, but hopefully it's not a long-term goodbye. We'll see each other again. Thank you all very much. Donald Trump bought Air Force One for the final time as President of the United States. Meanwhile, President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris attended Mass at the Cathedral of St. Matthew, the Apostle in downtown Washington, on Wednesday morning, joined by congressional leaders from both parties in a display of unity after weeks of tumult. Mr. Biden will become the only second Catholic to hold the presidency. The first was John F. Kennedy and is likely to swear his oath of office on a hefty family Bible accented with a Celtic cross. Kennedy's funeral ceremony was held at St. Matthew's Cathedral in 1986. A two-hour special program will be brought to you on the NTA 5 p.m. local time. From this moment onward, African Union member states will be able to start placing online pre-orders for their COVID-19 vaccine allocation through the African Medical Supplies Platform. This is coming on the heels of a provisional 270 million doses secured for African Union member states. Benny Adams has the details. The union, through its COVID-19 African Vaccine Acquisition Tax Team, has secured vaccines on behalf of the African Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Afri Exim Bank is facilitating payment by providing advance commitment of two billion U.S. dollars to the manufacturers on behalf of all member states. African Union Special Envoy Strive Masiina is of the view that the initiative is to ensure fair allocation coupled with timely and equitable access of the vaccines across the continent. To support vaccination operations, the African Medical Supplies Platform has also launched ultra-low temperature freezers, personal protection equipment and other accessories for member states. The 270 million vaccines are from Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and AstraZeneca. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. And now to issues of COVID-19. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has announced 1,301 new COVID-19 infections in 21 states and the FCT. In the latest figures released, Lagos is still leading with 551 new cases. FCT followed with 209, Oyo has 83, Plateau 65, Kaduna 64, Enugu 61, and River State records 44 new cases. Others are 39 in Ondo, 37 in Benue, 31 in Akwaibom, 19 in Kano, 18 each in Delta and Gombe states, 16 in Ogun. 15 in Edo, 10 in Kebi, 9 in Ebony, 4 in Jigawa, Oshun and Zamfara states have three new cases each, while Borno and Nasarawa states have one new infection each. The active cases at the moment are 20,641 in Nigeria. So far, Nigeria has 113,305 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with 91,200 discharged, while 1,464 died of the virus, unfortunately. To ensure comprehensive and efficient environmental health action amid COVID-19, the Federal Ministry of Environment is adopting continuous primary preventive measures by disinfecting schools of dangerous pests and vectors. The measure is in partnership with the Federal Ministry of Education. Odenge Fineface reports. The contamination of public places is a critical part of Nigeria's response to COVID-19. Several public places, including schools, offices, and markets, were decontaminated at the onset of the virus in the country. With the second wave of the pandemic already causing damage in the country, the Federal Minister of Environment is remodeling the decontamination exercise from a one-off process to a continuous one, beginning with federal government colleges across the country. 
viruses, bacteria, and some other microbes or pathogens, if you call them uh, collectively, that can cause disease, uh, can be eliminated by this decontamination and disinfection because we use chemicals that are potent enough to kill viruses, bacteria, and the rest of them on contact. Okay, this, <laughs> this is achieved through interministerial collaboration with the Ministry of Education. <laughs> to implement the eighth resolution of the National Council on Environment. Minister of Environment, Mohamed Mahmoud Abubakar, wants the Minister of Education to establish environmental health departments in tertiary education institutions to promote professionalism in environmental health and sanitation services in Nigeria. On Nengie Fine Face, NTA News. For more on COVID-19 and other stories, let's join Hingino in our Lagos Network Center. Hello, Hingino. Thank you, Lydia. Patients who manifest malaria-like symptoms will henceforth be made to undergo COVID-19 tests before treatment in Lagos State. Governor Baba Jideson will make this known while briefing journalists on latest efforts by government towards flattening the curve of the pandemic. Musa Tuliet has details. Governor Baba Jideson Olu said, with the increasing number of COVID-19 cases daily, especially in January, ranging between 214 and 910, it has become extremely necessary not to take chances, but to subject all patients with malaria symptoms to COVID-19 tests. The governor hinted that it is not all tears of woe in the state, as the medical team has intensified efforts in collaboration with 20 private laboratory consortium to boost the testing capacity, which now revolves between 2,500 and 3,500 per day. This alarming trend has necessitated plans to reopen some of our previously established isolation centers. It is our hope that this would support our efforts towards containing the rising case and flattening of the cough in the shortest possible time. Governor Bajide Sonwolu sheds more light on the controversy surrounding the stay-at-home order for civil servants on grade level 14 and below and resumption of schools. Each ministry also has a calendarization. There's a roster of people that are within level one to 14 that are also allowed to come. But what they've done is that they've done a roster of people to come in. But you know, the first thing we did was to say, you know what, everybody comes. It's only when your name now appears on the roster that you have. So they have rosters of people that are also coming in. So it's not everybody, it's not blanket, but just to ensure that the enforcement is real. He disclosed that as at 17th January, Lagos had recorded 41,374 cases out of this number, 28,452 have recovered, while fatality rates stands at 277. In Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. Now, away from COVID-19, the community-based policing strategy has continued to gain precedence as an effective method for security and crime prevention in the society. Lynn Lenneke reports that this was demonstrated during the inauguration of five projects at Area B Force Headquarters in Apapa. This work environment no doubt motivates staff to deliver on targets, especially when facilities are up to date. This is the case with the Area B Command Headquarters of the Nigerian Police Force in Apapa. As the police formation transforms from a dilapidated state of its facilities to what can now be described as a befitting work environment. The Area Commander, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Akimbayo Olasukomi, on resumption, decided to give the facility a facelift. Two new blocks of 15 offices and laundry were added to the existing structures. We spend ample time of our daily lives in the office. So I do not see anything wrong in keeping or innovating my command to such an extent that it will improve the quality service delivery of my officers and men. He put a class of excellence, distinct, into what he's doing there. The Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 2, Ahmed Ilyasu, commended the leadership of the command for the initiative, emphasizing the importance of community policing to the success of the force in curbing crime. We are seeing the dividend it has taken root, means community problem has 
give us solutions to, to profile, not only to uh, the security architecture, but to other aspects of the welfare of the society. Reducing crime and criminality through communal efforts is what has been demonstrated at the ARB Police Command Headquarters. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. We now take a break. Nationwide continues after that with Lydia in Abuja. Wonderful news. The village headmaster is coming back to your screen. Mowiri Abimi Owiri. Teacher no more. I fell a one country. Teacher no more. I fell a one country. Omoni Resiti Day. Bona better school for last giddy. Not be honest on a rugged yeah, yes, school for each. I mean, I know I know I don't know for you. Sega, it's called Oja Village. Can you see? We know happy at all at all. Yeah, at all. And I know that even you too, you are getting a lot of orders. Too. Hey, we are trying to shower. Sweep her leg out. Of, she was standing there. Sweep it. I love you so much. And how did I give you the impression that I was interested in that position? <laughs> 50 year uh, anniversary. You mean anniversary? I mean, it's not I talk with that now. Not for me. Not for me because of for me. I'm not for me because of for me. I'm not for me because of for me. About 35 percent of them get picking, and even them women safe. Some of them they even die in the process. Emotional trauma, uncle, they make some of them be like say they know they this what they gain, they don't go, but they still they live, they live like ghosts. Some of them shame don't cook make them go kill yourself. It's no good though. This not be our culture, it not fit be the African way. Why we can't allow this kind of yet enjoy body with us, so they in loud way way. If you know they fear law where man put, you know they fear Baba God there. You self, you where they cover mouth, so you see many, many, one hour they happen. You know what I hear when the Oyibo talk say, problem where they bring come out. Then they solve and sharply. Remember, person where feel rape, if it's a key person, you know, if it be you, if it be your picking, if it be person them where you love well, well. So make we learn they carry women then, like diamond where we be. No grief for rape, oh. Thanks for staying with us. The Federal Inland Revenue Service is streamlining critical tax components, leveraging on Finance Act 2020. This is to boost revenue generation, 
profile in 2021, tax projection in meeting national infrastructural demands. This came to the fore during the review of FIRS scorecard in the year 2020 on NTA Current Affairs Program Tuesday Live. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports. Tax diversification and the right attitude of citizens in shaping the channels of tax collection is a drive for the realization of a financially viable economy. The Finance Act 2020 is a regulatory instrument for achieving revenue stability and checkmating leakages, tax invasion, poor remittances, and sustaining budget funding within a fiscal year. The Finance Act 2020 have provided you know, closure to those gaps. So the implication is that compliance level will increase, collections will also increase. There's also a lot of reliefs on the part of the taxpayers. Most countries where reforms take place, it is not about increasing tax rates. It is about reducing rates, broadening the tax base, and at the same time, you know, improving compliance. The experience we are going to get, the knowledge they are going to share with us, we are going to document and to see what we can do to help government in generating more revenue uh, for funding its budgetary requirement. Federal Inland Revenue Service is therefore deploying more drive in surpassing the 2020 benchmark as a single agency that generated trillions of naira to keep the nation economy afloat. There are no issues of multiplicity of taxes. There are only income taxes, um, complex income tax, value-added tax, stamp duties, capital gains tax, all of which are, are, are enshrined in the laws elected by the National Assembly. Technology and other measures that are put in place by the management is more difficult for staff to engage in uh, on wholesome practice within the service and not be caught. Experts say 65 million Nigerians are liable for tax payment as they proposed a robust stimulus to guarantee a working economy through effective tax regime. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News. Meanwhile, financial experts have commended the provisions made in the 2020 Finance Act especially in the areas of tax reduction, zero levy on importation of tractors, as well as relief for mass transit. Correspondent Ekemini Williams, who monitored the conversation on NTS Good Morning Nigeria, reports that the experts also called for full compliance with the Act. Inflation, the largest component of it is transport. So we were looking at how do we uh, make a provision that enables the reduction in the cost of transportation, which will have the consequences of reducing food inflation and providing relief to every Nigerian. So we had to take this very difficult decision about uh, reducing the levies in the, within the transport sector. Zainab Ahmed. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, explaining the rationale behind government's review of the Finance Act. On the five thematic areas covered by the review, the Finance Minister says the objective is to boost the agricultural sector of the economy, consistent with the government's determination to diversify the economy and generally improve the day-to-day -day lives of Nigerians. Food security is very important. We saw what happened during COVID. If we were not able to feed ourselves in Nigeria, imagine what would happen. We are not changing the auto policy. What we are doing is adjusting the import tariffs and the import duties and the levies that have been in place for a long time, which have not served us well, by the way. The minister ordered that government will look into providing additional relief for local vehicle manufacturers to support their investments. Experts on the program described the Finance Act as impressive, but advised the Central Bank of Nigeria to look into prevailing foreign exchange rates. It's only in terms of the cost of the fuel, uh, which is still tied to the dollar, and the dollar is going higher. It's not a fiscal policy for government to um, uh, touch foreign exchange rate. It's a monetary policy issue 
and uh, we have to leave the issue of the dollar for the CBN to uh, try and stabilize the dollar rate so that uh, things can be affordable in Nigeria. Yeah, I see a rebalancing of, uh, of relationship, fiscal relationship between the federal government and the state government, the subnationals, especially in the electronic uh, money transfer, new electronic money transfer uh, provision of the uh, of the bill. President Mohamed Buhari recently signed the Finance Act into law along with the 2021 budget. In Abuja, Ekemini Williams, NTA News. As part of its mandate to curb all forms of illegal activities in the riverine area of Ondo State, the Nigerian Navy Igbokoda base has intercepted six boats with over 100 drums of illegally refined diesel and arrested 24 suspects along Ondo Lagos coastal route. Olubokola Aduo has details. Items recovered from the suspects include 150 drums of illegally refined diesel, 10 horsepower outboard engines, 8 pumping machines, 24 mobile phones, and several GP tanks. The commanding officer, forward operating base Igbokoda, Navy Captain Shoaib Ahmed said, efforts to secure and curb illegal bunkery, piracy, sea robbery and kidnapping within Ilajai and SL, the local government areas and environs are beginning to yield positive results. The communities are therefore requested to provide the base for any military organization with meaningful information that will lead to the curbing of all forms of illegalities some of the suspects confessed their involvement in the illegal business. The base says the 24 suspects will be handed over to appropriate authorities as soon as investigations are concluded. In Akure, Olubukola, Aduo, NTA News. As the ongoing judicial panel of inquiry sitting in Port Harcourt strives to a successful con strides to a successful conclusion, more witnesses have continued to appeal for in-depth investigation into alleged cases of unlawful arrest, torture, death, and detention of corpses perpetrated by the Nigeria police. Ijema Ugweke has more. Ongoing judicial panel of inquiry into alleged rights violation committed by operatives of Nigeria police has so far dealt with about 120 cases since its inauguration on November 24, 2020 in Port Harcourt. More witnesses have continued to appear before the panel to testify on cases of right abuses and lawful detention of persons perpetrated by operatives of Nigeria police. Yeah, community security. At uh, Ukurama Transamade Port Harcourt, no crisis. I saw anti, anti cultism came and shot me on my left leg. Sass men came to my house. They arrested me, brutalized me and my cousin. They took us. They destroyed the roof of my building, molested my dad. Out of the 12 cases heard at the 26th Judicial Panel sitting, seven were selected for conference, three were struck out for abuse of court process, while two were adjourned for cross-examination and continuation of hearing. In Port Harcourt, Ijomu Gweke, NTA News. Now, Lanre has the next set of stories making the rounds in our Ibadan Network Center. Lanre, you're on. Media and welcome to Ibadan. The newly deployed inspector, Assistant Inspector General of Police Zone 11, Oluyemi Agumbiadi, has assured the people of effective restructuring of the existing security architecture in Oyo State. He made this known during his familiarization tour of Oyo Police Command. Correspondent Rofia Animashan Badmas has details. As part of efforts to revitalize and re-energize the existing security sector and the officers in the state, AIG OMBID solicited support of stakeholders to improve policing and effective security of lives and property. The AIG's interaction with stakeholders was motivated on the need to address the myriad of security issues across the state. A criminal is a criminal and you should be dealt with in, that, in such a manner. Not a situation where you will say 
uh, is from Sozo tribe. No. We are even seeing most of the kidnappers are even sometimes your, your cousin, your in-law, they have been the one we have been arrested. Participants described measures by the AIG as steps in the right direction. The community policing system is being developed. Everything like that. I, I believe we are up for something new. And see what is going on all over the state right now in Okyogun and here and there. So I think the development is very important that we should come together and discuss about how to improve in security aspects. Key players in security are all for that. The assumption of office of AIG and the new commissioner of police in your state, Ngozi Onodeko, would in no small measure improve on security strategies in your state. In Ibadan, Rofia Animation Badmos, NTA News. I'm moving on to a report from the agricultural sector. Stakeholders in poultry industry have appealed for government's intervention at ensuring provision of major raw materials, especially maize and soya beans, for poultry feeds. The appeal came on the heels of scarcity of the grains in the southwest. Kayode Oladushu tells us more. Agricultural practices contribute about 21% to the Nigeria gross domestic product in which poultry industry, being part of it, plays significant role in the provision of food production in the country. The poultry industry, where the production of egg and chicken, solely rely on quality feed meal derived from maize and soya bean for the poultry birds. However, the current hike in the price of maize and soya bean has created a setback for the industry. If urgent attention is not given to the crisis of feed, that we have in the, in the country currently. We are going to see not just the small farms folding up, the medium-sized farms are going to join. As this raw material contributes about 70% to the poultry industry to survive, major players in the industry prefer ways for it to sustain in the country. The maize that is in the country is not sufficient to satisfy our demand. We need for federal government to give us a window to import a no feed grade maize. In the meantime, federal government has promised that about 300,000 metric tons of maize will be released into the Nigeria market in February this year under the anchor borrowers program of the Central Bank of Nigeria with the expectation that the prices of maize will drop drastically in the market. In Ibado, Kado Ladush, NTA News. And I'll hand you over to Lydia in Abuja for continuation of Nationwide. Many thanks, Larry. Minister of State Education, Chukwemeka Nwajuba, has flagged off better education service delivery for all in MINA. Hussein Musa reports that 1.9 billion naira has so far been released for the program in Niger State. Minister of State Education says it has become imperative to integrate Islamic and Western education in primary schools in order to discourage the Almajri system in the society. He urged the state government and relevant organizations to make judicious use of the 1.9 billion naira released for the program to ensure its sustainability. For any country to develop, it must have a well-developed educational system that equips its people and prepares them with adequate knowledge that will enable them to take competitive advantage of a 21st century knowledge-driven economy. Governor Bakar Sanabello, who reviewed developmental strides attained in the education sector of the state, says the administration prioritized investment in education within its limited resources. The enthronement of functional education system, especially at the basic education level has been part of our deliberate attempt at reducing the number of out-of-school children in the state. Niger State is among the 17 focal states enlisted for the Better Education Service Delivery for All, a World Bank-assisted program targeted at reducing the number of out-of-school children in Nigeria. A total of 1,599 elementary centers were identified in 517 communities in the 15 focal local government areas of the state. 206,093 
out of school children we are captured so far 72,553 out of school children have been enrolled in 367 selected non-formal education centers in the state in Mena Husayna Musa NT News. Still on education, the Director General, National Emergency Management Agency, Air Vice Marshal Mohamedou Mohamed Retired, has challenged academic institutions to intensify research in the areas of disaster risk reduction and mitigation to reduce the high level of devastation being experienced across the country. The Director General stated this when he received a delegation from the Nasarawa State University CAFI, led by the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic Professor Olayemi Akinwumi on a court visit. Ilyasu Ali Yakubo was there. The magnitude of devastation occasioned by perennial flooding and other related disasters have continued to raise concerns among stakeholders with a view to finding a lasting solutions to the incident. These, the NEMA Director General says, all hands must be on deck to tackle the problem. He told the delegation to, as a matter of urgency, develop a mechanism that will see to the total reduction of loss of lives and property worth billions of naira. Then whatever problems, whatever challenges we have, we are going to solve them scientifically. If we have Nasara State University, why do you want to go too far to get solutions to your problem? Leader of the delegation and Deputy Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Olayemi Akiwumi, promised to assist the agency do whatever it can to achieve its desired projections. He congratulated the DG for the achievement within his short time in office. We can find many ways of collaborating. Collaborating in terms of research, collaborating in terms of cooperation. And we are really ready to offer what we have at the Institute. The meeting also identified other areas of mutual interest and collaboration for the effective management of disasters across the country. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliakubu, NTA News. Having first-hand knowledge of fire prevention and safety to avoid future fire outbreaks, according to Firefighter, has been identified as an effective way of avoiding fire escalation. Evelyn Baduekbo in this report tells us more on fire safety tips during the dry season. The dry season occasioned by the Hamilton has made the environment more susceptible to fire outbreaks, which is the reason for the clarion call for people to avoid bush burning, improper use of appliances, which has led to various fire disasters. More worrisome is the spate of fire incidences across the country, of recent being the Zumfuru market in Sokoto, which was gutted by fire. To this end, experts are of the view that a good knowledge of fire characteristics and behavior can enable an individual to identify any possible risks. Avoid overloading uh, electrical circuits. Ensure that your gas uh, cooker uh, covers are well sealed, watertight, when not in use. And make sure that you put off uh, some of the lights that you know uh, you are not using. There should be a proper education and awareness on the use of naked wire that can bring about even something like bushfire. People thought it's easy or it's just a common play. They put fire, they don't know the extent that the fire will go to. Maybe before I left my home, I have to have everything fun, anything concerning Nepal. If somebody will drive a car. They are putting fire by the side and the person just drive the car and come and park. According to the firefighter, most fire incidences can be avoided and proper sensitization and awareness on fire safety have been yielding results. Individuals are also advised to buy fire extinguishers as measures to prevent fire emergencies. In Uyo, Evelyn Badu Ekpo, NTA News. Ogun State Government has barred tankers and other articulated vehicles from plying flyovers in the state. The order was occasioned by the tanker explosion that occurred Tuesday morning along Kuto Road, Abiyokuta, which claimed three lives and left many injured. Leko Agbonde has an update on the incident. 
Joseph Governor Dakwa Abeldun, during his visit to the scene of the accident, described the incident as unfortunate and ordered that henceforth no tanker or articulated vehicle should ply flyovers in the state to forestall future recurrence. The governor also visited the state hospital in Ijaye and the Federal Medical Center in Diaba, Abdelkuta, where some of the victims who suffered various degree of burns were receiving treatment. The tanker was said to have lost its control while plying the flyover and subsequently ran over another vehicle before the explosion in Abelkuta. Lekon Agbonde, NTN News. Federal government flags off free basic health care in Sokoto. Asmao brings us details from our Sokoto Network Center. Hello, Asmao. Lydia, good evening and welcome to Sokoto. Sultan Muhammad Saad Abubakar has commiserated with the victims of fire outbreak at the Sokoto Central Market. Sheikh Mohammed Dati reports that the Sultan and his entourage were received and briefed by the Director General of the Market, Maikudi Dogondaji. The report. The monarch described the inferno as the will of God, calling on the affected people to take heart and pray to God to avoid future occurrence. Sultan Saad reminded the victims that whenever such calamities occur, prayers are the only solution. He called on the state government committee to expedite action and ensure justice in the discharge of their responsibility. Sultan Muhammad Saad charged the market authority and security operatives to protect the wealth of the business community. He described the loss as not only for the victims, but the entire Muslim community and the northwest states of Nigeria. Special prayers were offered to avoid future occurrence. The Sultan was conducted around affected shops by the Director General of the Market. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Dati, NTA News. A cross-border bridge along River Ingaski local government area of Kebi State, which is between Nigeria and Benin Republic, is to be jointly constructed by the two countries in fulfillment of President Muhammad Buhari's determination to maintain the existing relationship between the two countries. The Director General National Boundary Commission, Adamu Adaji, disclosed this at a meeting in Brine Kebi between delegations from Nigeria and Benin Republic on the proposed bridge project. Usman Abdullahi Shehu has the report. The Director General National Boundary Commission, Adamu Adaji, said the team were in Kebi State in continuation of series of meetings between Nigeria and Benin Republic on the planned construction of a cross-border bridge by the two countries at River Wara in Kebi State. Adaji said the meeting was aimed at strategizing on best ways to execute the project that will be of benefit to the two countries to further ease the lives of the border communities of the two nations. What we are here to do is service to humanity. We also want to cement the relationship between Nigeria and Benin. The Director of Transborder Cooperation in the Republic, Yusufo Adam, said the project will make a stronger tide between Nigeria and Benin Republic. He commended the two countries' president for the initiative to construct the bridge that will benefit the border communities of the two nations and improve socio-economic development. In a related development, the team visited Governor Abubakar Atikuba Gudu to intimate him on their mission in the state. The Kerry State Governor described Nigeria and Benin Republic as one which share a common on boundary as well as culture, expressing hope that the project, when completed, will foster great unity between the two countries. Nigeria has always been responsible to uh, its borders, even when we are faced with a very, very distasteful. We have been our brothers give us delegation also inspected the site at River Wara near Zamiya community in Ingaski local government area of Kebi State, where the cross-border bridge will be constructed. Swan Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. And that's it from here. The news will continue after these messages. Please stay tuned. A new edition of TV Guide is out with special focus on the game change. His Excellency, Governor Abdullahi Suli of Nasarawa State. Broadcasting in a digital economy, Maxwell Noble gives an insight. This edition also features Nancy Naji of AIT, a name synonymous with business. Meet 
the NCDC boss, Dr. Chikwe Ihe Kwazu. TV Guide, your indispensable companion, also explains the relevance of social media in the modern society. Meet some TV professionals who have impacted their spaces and other inspiring stories in sports, entertainment, and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or MTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you. In your living room, office, and everywhere, anywhere. We provide a company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs, and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview Channel 264, or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. Application for iOS or Android. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. Life can be very eventful. We curiously expect things to happen even when we don't know what. Our human nature makes us like and repost lots of information. Some are unverified, inciting anger and hate. Sometimes innocently, other times the urge to break it first. This, in most cases, has caused destruction in many nations. A 24-hour news station brings you news and happenings seven days a week. News at 10 a.m., news update at 11 and 1 p.m., news desk at 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., and late evening news at 11 p.m. Follow us on any of our platforms and keep abreast of events and current affairs within and outside our shores. We are on DSTV Channel 419, Go TV Channel 46, Star Times Channel 101, and Free TV Channel 703. Jones. Thanks for staying. Abia State Governor Okeze Ikpazu has enjoined Nigerian youths to embrace the spirit of self-development rather than put their destiny in the hands of the older generation. He gave the advice at the Government House Umuahia when he hosted the leadership of the National Youth Council of Nigeria Southeast Chapter. Kingsley Ononiwo has the details. Okeze Ibazo, while addressing the youth leaders from the five side east states, find at the way and manner some Nigerian youths rely only on the political office holders and other older generations for their future survivors rather than develop themselves. He therefore enjoined the youth to take their destiny in their own hands by embracing the spirit of self development. But find a way to be out here and rock it out with everybody today. I think that we have a great thing to come And the fortune is not even outside that yet. Millionaires of this century, of this millennium, are going to come from Africa. The Abia State Chairman of the National Youth Council of Nigeria, Comrade Sylvanus Smith, who led the delegation and other zonal leaders of the association, described Governor Keze Bazo as a lover of the youth who has empowered many youths in the state and beyond. The youth leaders, in appreciation, conferred on the governor an award of the most youth development support governor in the southeast. In Omaha, King Silonaniu, NTA News. 
the people of Alo and Nobi, both in Idemili South, local government area of Anambra State, have breathed a sigh of relief following the award of contract for the control of erosion sites in the area by the federal government. Community leaders during the flag off assured the contractor of the needed support to achieve the target. Chinyere Fesi Okoye reports. The issue of gully erosion is major concern in southeastern part of Nigeria, and this is not only increasing in occurrence, but also in magnitude. Gullies like this one here in Alo is said to be one of the greatest environmental disasters facing many towns and communities in Anambra State, as the state is said to have over 1,000 active erosion sites. The affected area is fast becoming hazardous for human habitation, as many residential homes have been submerged and others under threat. Large areas of agricultural lands are becoming unsuitable for cultivation, as it destroys farmlands and lowers agricultural productivity, among other challenges. Considering the magnitude of this site and the untold hardship the people are passing through, the federal government decided to come to their rescue. With the handover of the site to the contractor, people of Alo explained that they have exhausted all within their means before now to check the monster that has lasted for many years or to no avail. Too grateful. We are, we are saying that God of heaven will reward you people. I feel all right. I feel all right. It will be recalled that in December 2020, the federal government of Nigeria, through the Ecological Fund Office, Abuja, awarded the contract in the sum of 1.4 billion naira for the erosion control work on the Mbombo Okunwa at Umumbelo Ebenesi, Okebnoye village, Alo. We don't like having friction. If there are issues that you believe that need to be addressed, you go to the consultant and the consultant will bring it down to the office. We will not want a situation where you go to contract and start saying this one is part of it or this is not doing the right thing. Whatever, we have a channel of communication. What we want to promise you is that within the 16 months allocated for this job, God willing, we shall finish before the 16 months. From Alo, the Ecological Fund team and their entourage moved to two other erosion sites in Nobi, also in the South Local Government area of Anambra State, part of the awarded contract as well as the bridge at the boundary between Alo and Nobi, where the people lamented inestimable socioeconomic damages down to the community. I've been uh, eating deep into the farmlands of my people. We are not sleeping. If, if any time it is plain, we are not sleeping. I don't know how to express my million worth of thanks to federal government to come to our aid. Chinyere Fesi Okoye, NTA News. Now, sports update is next, and Tamara Ibiwe will walk us through. Welcome to Sports Update. I am Tamara Ibiwe. 592 athletes drawn from nine military and paramilitary agencies are competing in 15 sports at the One Service One Medal Games at the Moshu Dabiola National Stadium in Abuja. We have about uh, 14 of them. So if one one of them can struggle and give us only one medal at the Olympics or, or all African Games, then Nigeria is good to go. The agencies include Correctional Service, Fire Service, the Nigeria Police, Federal Road Safety Corps, Nigerian Air Force and the Nigerian Navy. In wrestling, more qualifications for the Tokyo Olympic Games are expected at the African Championships built for El Jadida, Morocco, in April. National coach Purity Aku says Team Nigeria wrestlers are in good shape after their display at the just-ended Baraza Champion of Champions tournament in Yenagua, Bayasa State. <laughs> very satisfied uh, with the performance of our athletes. It shows we still have some uh, serious uh, wrestlers. World number one in the 57 kg class, Oduanyo Adekworoye, is the only wrestler that has qualified for the Olympics. And that's it on Sports Updates. I am Tamara Ebiwe. The death has occurred of the Akwaibom state chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Obangudo Ekwenyong. A statement by the state's party publicity secretary, Boro Nobasi, indicates that Obang Ekwenyong died from complications traceable 
to COVID-19 virus. The statement adds that the party has been thrown into unimaginable grief by the news of his death and prays for God to comfort his family. Similarly, the All Progressives Congress Aquabom State Chapter has received its shock, the sudden demise of the state chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Aquabom State. A statement by the first publicity secretary, Inkere Uwem Enyong Ekere, says the party is deeply saddened by the untimely death. The APC family in the statement shares in the emotions and the grief of this great loss and also condoles the late chairman's family, the PDP family, and the state governor, Udom Emmanuel. And that concludes, on that side note, to conclude nationwide. Don't forget to join NTA in the stand against rapists and rape. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. And don't forget the special program on the inauguration of Joe Biden. Good evening.